uh, Mr. Director General, uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, let me wish our female colleagues uh, a very happy International Women's Day. I think it's a, it's a day to remember, and not only today, but I believe every day. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Director General, since this is our first official meeting here in Africa Rice, although it's about a year old, I think I still owe you Congratulations on your appointment as Director General. <clears throat> Africa itself remains a key continent for IFAD. And it's crucial in our belief that Africa holds the key to food security globally. For me in particular, it's uh, an emotional experience coming back to Africa Rice, although now headquartered in Abidjan. I had the opportunity about a year ago to visit Mbe, where I received very warm welcome. Uh, Rose was at the head of the delegation in Mbe at that time. And as I mentioned to the Director General, uh, I was beyond words on what I saw after practically over 10 years of having been forced out of uh, Boake. And I congratulate the dedication and commitment of uh, the Africa Rice staff and families that continued to maintain the facilities at Mbe. When we left Côte d'Ivoire finally in uh, December 2004 and moved to uh, Calavi, Cotonou, in uh, Republic du Benin, little did we know that it would take us 10 years before we moved back. And so approximately 10 years since I left Africa Rice, 2006, I believe it was in September. So it's a good time to come back and to reflect after one decade. The experiences that we, uh, we had 10 years ago, I believe have added to strengthen this institution, to make it more global, to make it more Africa-based, not just West Africa-based. And Mr. Director General, I applaud your efforts in forging strong country programs as a foundation for Africa Rise of the Future. Decentralizing from headquarters and having strong programs in key countries and ensuring that you have solid footprints in those countries, rice systems. Africa has always been the focus of my institution, IFAD, right from its inception. And we have supported programs that have impacted on the lives of at least 250 million people in Africa. And Africa continues to receive about 50% of our total investments And we all know that West and Central Africa in particular is one region that has the high, highly fragile contexts, either due to war or due to climate, due to political instability. But also its production systems are negatively impacted by price, volatility, low agricultural productivity, and limited investments in agriculture by governments. 
We started a process of decentralization uh, at IFAD about seven years ago, soon after I joined the institution. We now have 42 country offices, of which 11 are in West and Central Africa. And uh, on, on average, half of them are, are actually based in Sub-Saharan Africa, which again indicates the importance of the region. Uh, we support projects in 23 countries in the region, in Western Central Africa. And I will, I'm very proud to inform our female colleagues that 58% of the participants in IFAD projects are women. So you, the basis of that is very simple. Uh, women, at least rural women, let me talk about rural women. Uh, I don't know about city women. Uh, if I focus on rural communities, rural women are the primary uh, farm workers, uh, apart from their daily chores of uh, household management, our experience shows that when you invest in a man, you invest in an individual, but when you invest in a rural woman, you invest in a community. And a community that is cohesive is a solid basis for stability in any country. Our collaboration with Africa Rice dates back many years, actually since IFAD was established in 1978, when we began our operations. I think we have, as you clearly enumerated, we have been engaged in several joint activities and programs, both in terms of research. But Africa Rice offers IFAD tremendous opportunities because you have strong partnership in the region, Sub-Saharan Africa, national agricultural research systems, you have contacts with academic institutions, farmers organizations, and non-governmental organizations that we also at IFAD can benefit from. As I mentioned that we have 11 country offices in the West and Central Africa region, and of course, as you know, Abu Bari is our country representative and the IFAD director in Cote d'Ivoire with an office just behind you here at the UNEP, UNEP premises. And I hope that Barry's uh, location here in Abidjan will afford stronger partnership between Africa Rice and IFAD. We need to foster better knowledge management sharing we need to invest in explicit and tacit, tacit knowledge management approaches based on your experiences and your lessons. Uh, you mentioned some of them, radio programs, broadcasting, improved rice productivity and inland valley lowlands. I think all of this can benefit from a stronger partnership. Well, I'm glad that in 20, 15 stroke 2016, you submitted, as you mentioned, three proposals or concept notes. One has been approved for the 2016 budget worth $2 million. A second proposal or concept notes on partnership with, as you mentioned, with the Africa Harvest in Nairobi for the same amount has been included in the grant pipeline for this year and should be approved in uh, on my return, I believe, to Rome when we have a grant review. So there will be at least, hopefully, two pipeline projects or concept notes you submitted, total of $4 million that should be approved for 2016. The third concept note that you mentioned it's a small grant, I believe, of $500,000. That is under consideration. But there is bigger opportunity for stronger collaboration, working with Abdul Bari, 
because our country program is where the money is. The grant proposals for IFAD are chicken, chicken change. <laughs> but the Cote d'Ivoire portfolio every three years is about what, 36 million? 20, 25 million dollars. Propacom is one example. And that's where we can use your expertise. IFAD is not a research institution. We can use your expertise in projects, implementation, in support for design, in support of supervision, for capacity building of national systems, etc., etc. And this is where I hope that uh, with the establishment of an IFAD country office in Abidjan, you will have stronger partnerships between IFAD and Africa Rice under our loan portfolio. I think the future is bright for Africa Rice. Reviving the concept of WADA Inc., now your partnership with OCP, is the right direction to go. It offers tremendous opportunities. Africa's population is going to reach uh, 2 billion by 2030, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's in about how many years? 15 years? Our young population is growing at an exponential rate. In Africa as a whole, currently you have 200 million below the age of 25. Uh, with a population, average population growth rate in Africa of 2.6%, and agriculture growing at 2.4%, <clears throat> the demand for food is going to increase. And rice means food for many Africans. So I think um, you have a tremendous opportunity for the future as long as you continue to, de to deliver on innovation as well as knowledge. Let me conclude by saying that I could not have come to Cote d'Ivoire without coming to Africa Rice. Um, when my a uh, special advisor informed me of the program that was being developed that they only had one hour for me in Africa Rice. I said, you must be joking. <laughs> one hour is not enough to shake hands with the, the DJ. <laughs> so I'm happy that they gave us the whole of the morning. Uh, since I'm actually visiting on a very personal basis, and I thought I could spend a day or two on an official mission. So I'm really delighted to be back here and to see some old faces, um, some old friends uh, continue to, come on, dire, les anciens combattants de la Drao. So thank you so much for this very warm welcome, and uh, I really wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you. <laughs>